Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This video is about creating a H-bridge circuit which converts high voltage DC to modified square wave AC using my TL494 modified square wave control card. So without any further ado, let's get started in this video. Over here you can see that I have drawn the circuit of the entire edge bridge on the very popular EZEDA software. The main component of this edge bridge is the bootstrap capacitance and the bootstrap circuit which is responsible for driving both the high side MOSFETs. As you know that we need a stable voltage between the gate and the source to drive the MOSFET properly. In our case it is the IRF840 and opening the data sheet we can see that it is a high voltage MOSFET which is capable of handling voltages of about 500 volts between its drain to source which is ideal for our application. One more transistor which is used in the bootstrap network is the MPSA42. This is a general purpose NPN transistor also with a higher collector emitter voltage of about 300 volts. Both the voltage ratings of the transistor and the MOSFET is essential for the smooth working of the circuit. Let us now have a brief understanding of how the bootstrap circuit works in driving the high side MOSFET. Over here you can see that we have the two control signals OUT1 and OUT2 which are the modified square wave control signals coming from my TL494 card. When the OUT signal is high, the transistor is turned on which in turn pulls the gate of the MOSFET to ground. Thus, in this case the high side MOSFET is off and the complementary low side MOSFET is on since it is directly being controlled by the OUT1 signal. You can see over here that during this time the capacitor connected to the source of the MOSFET is being charged to the supply voltage which is 12 volts via this diode. Now let us look at the second cycle when the OUT1 is low. During this time the complementary low side MOSFET is turned off and the high side MOSFET is turned on via the voltage which is stored in the 47 microfarad capacitor over here through this 2.2 kilo ohm resistance. It is very important to make sure that a proper voltage is applied between the gate and the source to properly turn on any MOSFET. During the switching, the voltage, in essence the charge stored in the capacitor is responsible for properly driving the MOSFET in the high side. The cycle repeats again and when the OUT1 signal is high again, the gate of the MOSFET is pulled low. This cycle repeats on and on. The same thing happens on the other side of the bridge as well. This feature is very much useful in driving the diagonal MOSFETs and thus providing us with the AC signal at the output of the edge bridge. With the theory out of the place, it was now time to move ahead with the PCB layout for which I use the EZDA software itself. Over here you can see that the high voltage power traces are more thick compared to the signal traces which allows them to handle more current. Over here you can also have a 3D look at the entire circuit. I will be using the toner transfer method to make my own DIY PCB. Such simple circuits are easy to fabricate at home and do not require much efforts. This is what the entire circuit looks like after soldering all the components on my DIY PCB. If you need a tutorial on making PCBs, do let me know. The heart of this project is the TL494 based modified square wave control card which generates accurate 50Hz signals based upon the crystal oscillator. The details of this project will be in the description and the i button above. Well it is now time to connect the control card with our high voltage edge bridge circuit. And as you can see the module looks complete and ready to be used with the high voltage DC signal in order to convert it into AC and essentially complete our inverter circuit. Before plugging in the high voltage DC, it is very important to check the gate voltage and the gate signals of all the four MOSFETs of the edge bridge. It is very essential to make sure that all the four MOSFETs receive the gate signal which is ideal for them to turn on. For our case, the signal should be about 10 volts. Now coming to the high voltage generation, 
This is a DC to DC converter which converts the 12 volt from the battery to about 300 volts DC at the output. The voltage at the output can be easily controlled using a feedback potentiometer. The details of this DC to DC converter will also be in the video description and the i button above. I would highly recommend you to check this out. With the edge bit signals tested and the high voltage available, it is finally now time to connect both the elements and have a look at the performance, connecting an AC load to the entire setup. Over here you can see that I have used a small table fan as my load and a step down transformer to visualize the output waveform using my mini oscilloscope. With the power now coming from the battery, we can see that the fan jumps to life and is working perfectly fine with our setup. Over here you can also see that the modified square wave waveforms are perfectly fine as visualized from the step down transformer on the oscilloscope. You can also observe the frequency to be exactly 50 Hz. The dead time can easily be controlled using the TL494 modified square wave card through the potentiometer. As a last test, I wanted to measure the current consumption for which I connected my multimeter in series with the battery and the inverter setup and I was quite happy to get an overall efficiency of about 84% which is not bad considering a DIY design. You can also see that the voltage waveform remains the same throughout the testing time and the MOSFET do not heat up. I hope you guys like this video, if so feel free to share your feedbacks, doubts and suggestions in the comment section below. All the relevant links to this project will be in the video description. Like, share and subscribe to my channel if you like my content and I will see you in the next one.